Welcome to Fishing Time, hosted by Team LRT, where we show you tips, tools, and rules, hooks, weights, and baits, the good, the bad, and sometimes the ugly, and why safety is so important. So hang tight, we got fish cleaning duty to do today. We're going to show you our techniques on how to clean different types of fish. I think we're going to show you all how to clean a speckled trout. I think we're going to show you how to clean a flounder. We might have a white trout in the box. We got some nice big red fish in the box. So everybody just hang tight. More fishing time hosted by Team LRT. We hope y'all enjoy the show. That's right, fish cleaning duty today needs to happen here. We got to clean the boat. We're gonna do some fish cleaning. We're gonna show y'all the catch that we had in the last couple of days. And let me tell y'all what, my friends, y'all were in for a treat because we had an outstanding fishing adventure for the past two days with Team LRT. To take care of your boat, keep it nice and shined up. Yeah, especially with that salt water, you know. Yeah. You got to get that soft water. You know, fresh water, you ain't necessarily got to do it unless you got, you know, some of that film on there. That's right. But we had two full days of action pack fishing. One of them was in Dog River, and the, yesterday we was in the Causeway, and the boat got a little dirty. I say a little dirty, got pretty good, but pretty dirty. We caught a numerous amount of trout, speckled trout that is. We caught a few white trout. We caught some nice, nice flounder. We got uh, some awesome redfish to show y'all. Uh, we just had an outstanding two days of fishing. The fishing is, is on fire. All I can say is y'all need to get out there and do you some fishing. Here we go. That's a redfish, better known as a red drum. That fish probably goes, what do you think there, Buzz Bait? Oh, I'm gonna give that fish three and a half, four pounds. He's a good four, he might even go four and a half to five pounds. I like to start on the back side. You gotta be real careful with these redfish. They got real tough skin. I'll start on one side and ride that backbone. Always good to have a sharp knife, especially these redfish. I don't know if y'all can see these scales. Uh, that scale is probably the size of about a dime. Sometimes it be the size of a quarter. Come back down to the tail part. Work your way up real nice and careful. You don't want to force it. Come back on the other side. <clears throat> so really you've got him. Let's see. You got the fins you gotta worry about. Just take your time. Especially with these red fish. Boy, look at that fillet right there, would you? Oh, that thing would go good in the frying pan right there, buddy. You can fry it, you can bake it, you can grill it. A lot of people like to, you know, leave that skin on, lay it on the grill like that, and just grill it like that, and then pick the meat out off the skin. Yeah, I tell you what, it is uh, an awesome treat just to rinse it off real good and have your charcoal grill and just keeps it nice and moist, keeps it nice and moist. But there again, uh, you know, we don't like to leave too much meat on the bone. It's Boy, that, that, that crab claw can show enough skin a fish up quick. That's stripped up, no doubt. We'll get buzz bait to start skinning. The flounder's a little bit different type of fish. You gotta be real careful with those teeth right there. I mean, those teeth are razor, razor sharp. Very dangerous fish, even when he's dead. Yeah. Oh, Bud's bait here. He done pulled out the electric knife. 
skin him up just like that. And look at that filet right there, would you? Yeah, Flounder's got a... Uh... Flounder's got a top side and he's got a bottom side. Top side is always thicker than the bottom side. The bottom side's always a thinner piece of meat and the top side always the thicker part. You can see where we kind of quartered him up on the top side and we'll quarter him back up on the bottom side. Yeah, these big old flounders right here, these big flat daddies, these things are something that are very rare. You don't see big, big flounder like this very often. You know, that, that fish is pretty old. And uh, old Cap Melmer, he put us on these bad boys. And as you can see, these things are big enough to where you can fillet them, skinless, boneless, flounder fillets. And buddy, it don't get any better than that on frying up some good flounder skinless boneless fillets i guess that fish probably goes i'm gonna give that fish four or five pounds at least maybe we'll, even five and a half we'll quarter him up as well we'll make a slight incision around the head we'll come down the back part right down the center And always let your knife work for you. You don't want to force a knife. You want to let the knife work for you. There again, you kind of ride it down on both sides. Mm -mm -mm. Got some flounder caviar. Look at that right you. there. Put that to the side. Oh, Crab Claw likes that for a snack. Hey, <laughs> caviar. Buddy, let me tell y'all what, we have got us some fillets here. Yeah, I'll tell you what, we got some slabs, no doubt. We, sure do. we had outstanding fishing, two, two fishing days. Ain't much left on the old boy. Thing, buddy. You, can, you can read the newspaper through that bad boy, can't you, Grab Claw? Hey, that crab claw can show enough clean of fish. There's no bones at all in that, that thing right there. I tell you, an old, an old black man uh, taught our family how to cut fish. I guess it was back in uh, probably about 78, 79. You know, we could cut fish recreational, but when you're trying to sell fish commercially, you gotta be sure you don't leave any meat on the bone, you know? You gotta be sure she's shaved in there nice and tight. That's where all the profit's at, you see? Ooh. But yeah, he showed us uh, how to cut fish commercially. Uh, when you cut fish commercially, you have to slow down a little bit. You gotta take your time. You gotta use a little bit of quality. He taught us how to cut the cheeks out of grouper cheeks. He, he taught us how to snatch the throats out the easiest way to do it it was pretty pretty very unique uh, to learn from an expert i think back in the day he's working with southern fish and oyster and uh we were fortunate enough to meet him through the links i still appreciate what that man has taught me today because i tell you when we first started out 
Okay, so that's how you can make a little bit more bang for your buck. A little bit more bang for your buck. I tell you what, he taught him very well. There's no doubt about that. There's no doubt about that. Look at that right there, would y'all? Another one of them red fish. You know, he probably goes a good solid four and a half, maybe five pounds. That's probably the trickiest part is getting it started. You know, you gotta pull a few of them scales off to get your knife in there. There again, she is awfully slippery. You know, you catch these big bull reds like this, which that's a, a semi bull. I mean, he isn't, you know, redfish get tremendous in size. You know, they can get up to 40, 50 pounds. But these right here, this size right here, is right at the verge of maxing out on eating size. I mean, you get them a little bit bigger than that, you know, I mean, you get a lot of meat off of it, but we, we seem to like them smaller, you know, than 6 to 18, 16 to 24 inch redfish. Slot red, slot, slot red. red. That's what they call it. Always had that knife going away from you. See how he's having to dig down in there? You know, the bigger they get, the tougher it is to show enough, get that good fillet out of it. That's what we was talking about. But I tell you what, buddy, that right there. Oh my goodness. Got a little assembly line going on. Yeah. We don't like we don't like to waste time when we're cleaning fish. Oh no, sir. Takes no, a, sir. Takes a little bit of extra work. And of course, with all the fish we caught the last couple of days. I mean, wow, what a trip. What a trip, I'll tell you what, buddy. Oh, oh Team Lartig, you know. They seem to always find some fish. Other days are better than than other days. I'm just running that backbone, that, that, that little rib cage, that rib cage out right there. I want to give a special thanks out to old Captain Elmer for putting us on these fish. Because he was the one that located them and we was the one catching them. <laughs> But he called his share of them. I tell you what, that captain had an outstanding day, Captain Elmer. Crab Claw got on a bunch of them. Old Buzz Bait, he caught a bunch. It was a big team effort. Following the birds, you know, when you're out there fishing, uh, whether it be Mobile Bay, Fowl River, Dog River, you know, pay attention to the birds. You know, we found these fish on the birds. We've seen the birds working. And lo and behold, uh, by the time we got there, we was catching speckled trout one after the other. Oh, yes, I mean, we was. Yes, we was, that old crab claw. I guess uh, we're going to fill our freezer box up, huh, Captain? I would hope that uh, all three of us here are going to get plenty of fish. Plenty of fish. Which there is nothing like good, fresh, speckled trout, red fish, white trout bass. It's just, it's, it's just unbelievable. Welcome to Lartig Seafood, the Gulf Coast Seafood Connection. Right here in Orange Beach, Alabama, right on the very west side. Family owned and operated since 1979. Specializing in fresh fish, fresh shrimp, and a variety of specially made items. We make our own cocktail sauce, ramalades, tuna dips, crab dips, all sorts of good stuff. Fresh crab meat. We also have a variety of spices. We have our own cookbooks. And of course, we got our own music CD, Fish Rod. So y'all be sure to come see us over here at Lartig Seafood, Orange Beach, Alabama. What'd you say, Crab Claw? This here's Buzz, babe. Just letting y'all know we got some of the finest charter fishing around. 
we carry bait, we have lure, we have all your fishing needs. If you want some live shrimp or live bull manners, you need to visit us down at our shore shop in Gulf Shores, Alabama. We got plenty of live bait, we have all the stuff that comes along with it, so y'all make sure you come on down and let's go fishing. For fishing time with Team LRT, 7 a.m. On what channel's that on, Graham Claw? WJTC, UTV 44, every Saturday morning, 7 o'clock. Yeah. Yes, there is. And another one. Make sure y'all come visit us down at the seafood shop in Orange Beach, Alabama, where we got fresh seafood and hot gumbo and just all kind of specialty items. So y'all come on down to the seafood shop. Where the seafood's fresh. And the gumbo's hot. You pick it, we'll steam it. Hot on the spot, either original or spicy hot. Y'all come see us at the seafood shop. Where we sincerely appreciate your business. You know that's right. Bait for yesterday, Captain. Well, <laughs> the hot bait is old Buzz Bait's favorite bait. Old rattle trap. The old rattle trap. See, it's hard to hard to beat that old rattle trap. You know, it's such a versatile bait. Catchy. Catchy just about anything. Very durable. So a lot of times when you when you catch one, one of these big reds or flounder or something, and he really gets it sunk in his mouth real good, you got to re reach in there with your needle nose and when pull her out. But you can always replace the hooks, like I've emphasized for, for years. Sharp hooks and good line is major, plays a major factor in catching fish like this. Absolutely, and uh, I would say, uh, you know, of course you gotta have good line, but a lot of people neglect, you know, to change their hooks out. You know, we use practically brand new hooks on all our, all our lures. And you'll be surprised that you'll be able to snag more fish, catch more fish with sharper hooks. Yeah, the ratio with them sharp hooks when that fish comes in and hits it, you know, if you got them sharp hooks, he's gonna sink on in there. You got dull, rusted out hooks, you can't, you, you'll miss more than you catch. Yeah, you, you'll, you're liable to miss a lot of fish. Skin, get your little piece cut out and you can hold the back of that skin and just run that knife right down the skin line and buddy she comes right on off. Yeah you can also use a pair of those uh, needle nose pliers uh <clears throat> comes pretty handy as well. That's what you got them there for it in the crab's hey, hey, Cap, I uh, tell you what. I got your tool right there. <laughs> oh Buzz <laughs> Oh Buzz baby <laughs> Ah He's picking it up. Yeah, he's picking it up. He'll pick it up eventually. Get on in there Buzz baby. I'll get in Come there. Come on in there babe. I'll get in there. Try that again. Reach in there and Grab that bad boy like that right there, see? You just pull that thing right down the line. I'll be doggone, Crab Claw. Work like a champ. We don't run no Mickey Mouse outfit around here at the Lartee's uh, fishing shop. As you can see. My, my, my. I always like to trim that little uh, rib cage bone <clears throat> before I skin it, <clears throat> not all the way through, and then I'll get my uh, my needle nose pliers. And you, you just gotta let the knife work, <clears throat> and then uh, look at that. Voila la! Now see, that's what about thirty years worth of skinning fish to get you right there. You know, I'm catching on. Like I said, old buzz bait will catch on eventually. He's still pulling them bad boys out. Yeah, we still. Man. Old buzz bait, he, he reach up there and grab him one too. He's that fillet knife to fillet here. Gotta be careful, these things are 
paper thin. You know, it's real funny how, you know, each fishing trip is very unique, you know, and different. I mean, how many times have you ever had, went fishing, and lo and behold, it was like the same trip as it was the day before? Yeah. Yeah, we have them. We started out uh, over there in Dog River, and we caught, I guess we caught maybe four or five specks, probably, what, two keepers, two or three keepers. Yeah. We caught probably maybe 12 redfish. We did. Uh, and we also caught, uh, we caught a couple of bass. We did. And then yesterday, you know, we go to the causeway and we catch, we didn't catch a redfish. Did not catch one redfish. We caught the mother lotus fats. We caught a few bass, a couple of bass, some white trout. But old crab claw forgot to tell you about the big flat daddies we caught over there in Dog River as well. Ooh. I mean, we caught some show enough, as crab claw calls them, and as I call them, doormats. Yeah, it was very unique, you know, it <clears throat> seemed to be a big fish day. Some days, you know, you catch big fish. You know, more days, you you know, you catch smaller fish. That's right, that's right. But some days, you know, it works your way, you know. Mm-mm. If you go fishing enough, you bound to have days like, like we had. Sooner or later, them days are gonna come. Yeah, that's true. <clears throat> if you put yourself, uh, you give yourself more opportunities. Uh... Exactly. They ain't always days like this, though, Gavin. No, sir. You know. No, sir. These are special days. Yeah, those are the ones you log down in your log book and uh, you say, wow, you remember when? As we was fishing yesterday, we run across this thing right here, which is called a largemouth bass. And I hooked him. And we was trying to determine if we was gonna put him in the live well or not, because we really, we wasn't 100% sure of the size limit. So we just, you know, picked the phone up, reached up, called the conservationist person, freshwater, and asked, and they said there is no size limit on bass in the state of Alabama. So there he is. You always hear Crab Claw talking about we love butter beans. Well, you don't always have to throw them back. You know, if they're big enough to fillet and you think you, you could get you a, a, a little meal or a feast off of it, put him in the box. Put him in the box. A lot of lakes though in the state of Alabama and around the country have a slot limit. And they will, you will, they will tell you when you get to the lake, well, it's always good to make sure, but they will have a size limit. Uh, the deal is they have a slot limit. And what you can do anywhere, one lake that we fished in was anything under 14 you could keep, but anything over 22 you could keep, but anything in between that 14 and 22 inch range, you had to throw back in the lake. And what that does, that manages the lake a whole lot better. That's why they have big fish in there because they have that slot limit. So just keep that in mind. You need to go lake fishing or anything like that. You need to make sure that you check your regulations and make sure you're all in right so you don't get in trouble. Think about that, Crab Claw. Uh, I think uh, some, some good advice. Uh, be sure you know where the rules and regulations are. You got that are. right, buddy. You know that's right. They're hard to keep up with. They're constantly changing. So, uh, you know, what it was yesterday might not be what it is today. That's exactly correct. You know, that is exactly right. But it's just a phone call away. That's all it is. You just need to take that time. Make that phone call, get it straight, then you're legal to go and everything is kosher and everything you're gonna be just fine. You have days such as this that you can log it down, then next year, you know, you'll say, hey, you remember catching all them, them big fish? Yeah, it's very important to keep a log book. <clears throat> That's the beauty of, uh, you know, fishing our waters, you know, whether it be the causeway, Fowl River, Dog River, 
I mean, it's brackish water fish. You know, you get a, a mixed variety of species of fish that you can catch, and I'm just telling you, it's, uh, we're very, very fortunate, you know, to be able to have the situations uh, with the estuaries that we have and the water systems. Uh, so I'm telling you what, uh, Dog River, Fowl River, the causeway is packing some fish. It packs fish. It Boy, I tell you what, if, if Momo RT and Willie B. Petey was here to see this, buddy, what in the world would you think they'd think there, Crab Claw? They'd probably tell you, well, well we've seen that before. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they probably would. Hey there, this is the old buzz bait, my partner, the Crab Claw. Available today for only $12.95 plus shipping. You can own your first edition. DVD fishing time video show. That's right, for only $12.95 plus shipping, you can own your first fishing time TV DVD hosted by Team RT. What'd you think about that, Crab Claw? Well, I'll tell you what, also available today, we have Fish Rock, original music by Crab Claw, Barracuda, and Electric Eel. I tell you what, do you think we might be able to hit them with a special today, Daryl Crab Claw? I'll tell you what, uh, if you order today, you get both. Fish Rock, original music, and Fishing Time TV DVD hosted by Team RT for only $12.95 plus shipping if you order today. That's only $12.95. So y'all need to order today. That's $12.95 plus shipping. We hope to see y'all soon. Order today. Order tomorrow. Order any day. Fishing Time hosted by Team RT. Y'all come see us. All right. One more time on the redfish. Redfish has real tough skin. You gotta be real careful. They got gill plates. Right here's a gill plate that will cut you like a knife. Razor sharp, razor sharp. We always like to try to push a few scales off of there. We'll run it down the back very slowly. And just kind of working it until you find your openings. Run it down the back. Ride that backbone. Leave one side on. I always like to leave one side on because it gives me leverage on my other side. If I were to take that side off, that fillet would be closer to the ground. Start on the back side. Working on up. Turn it. Come back around. Ride that backbone. on both sides. There's one. Come back and get the other side. And you're in there. And then one more time on skinning. Uh, show us another little technique on how to skin that uh, buzz bait. What you do? You know, this nice size redfish here, you know, you just simply grab that bad boy like that. Run it right down the skin. And there you have it. Mm. <clears throat> so hopefully uh, we were able to teach y'all a couple of techniques on how to clean fish, different species of fish. Next time. Fishing Time, hosted by Team Lar T. We hope y'all enjoying this shit.